On this week's episode of Local Matters, Julie talks with Alexandra Newcomb, Community Services Manager for the Duxbury Senior Center. Matt reports on spring concerts, sports winnings, and an award-winning PSA on In Our Schools, electronic billing, now available for Kingston residents, and more good-to-know resources on Snapshot, highlight what's happening in our South Shore towns, and go on the local scene with Megan Yost of the Duxbury Free Library. I'm Elizabeth Shanahan Jewett. Let's get started. Positive psychology builds on the humanistic movement, moving the psychological focus from maladaptive behavior and mental illness to an emphasis on creating a foundation for well being and happiness. On Monday, June 15th at 3 p.m., Join positive psychology speaker and life coach Pam Garamoni at the Pembroke COA for a talk on the science and practice of happiness. Based on rigorous science-based research, Pam can help you make progress in navigating transitions, clarifying goals, and affecting lasting changes in your life that will decrease your stress and increase the joy you feel. We know that happy people have stronger immune systems, are resilient, productive, and tend to have a large support system. If you're ready to make happiness your priority, call the COA at 781-294-8220 to reserve your spot. Up next is Keith Hughes with an all new Snapshot. Welcome to Snapshot, where we take a local look at the government stories that you may have missed. Earlier this year, Governor Baker signed legislation that included $100 million to help cities and towns with local infrastructure. The Winter Recovery Assistance Program, otherwise known as RAP, provides additional funds to improve roads and sidewalks impacted by winter weather conditions. These funds, administered by MassDOT, are in addition to Chapter 90 funds and must be spent by June 30th of 2023. Massachusetts residents now have until May 3rd of 2023 to get a real ID driver's license to use for domestic travel and entry into some federal buildings or have a valid passport to use in those instances. The RMV is encouraging residents to check their licenses and ID cards for expiration dates and of getting a real ID to plan ahead in scheduling their appointment and having the necessary documents. Real ID appointments need to take place in person. You can schedule an appointment and find the checklist for the documents you'll need by visiting the RMV website, mass.gov RMV, or if you're a AAA member, scheduling through northeast.aaa.com. With warmer weather coming quickly, the Massachusetts Department of Environmental Protection has declared a level one drought in the town of Pembroke, and the Public Works Department has put water restrictions in place. Outdoor watering is limited to handheld hoses or watering cans and can only be done before 9 a.m. or after 5 p.m. one day per week. Odd-numbered houses can water on Wednesdays or Fridays, even-numbered houses on Tuesdays or Thursdays. You can read more on these restrictions, including what's considered non-essential outdoor water uses at PembrokeMA.gov. Electronic billing is now available for Kingston residents. Real estate taxes, motor vehicle excise taxes, and water bills can now be paid on the town's website through the City Hall Systems, a third-party billing vendor. Instructions can be found on the town's website where you can create an account and link your bills. You can also opt to receive your bills electronically only or continue to get paper bills mailed to you while also receiving an emailed copy. For more information, visit KingstonMA.gov or call the collector's office at 781-585-0507. The Kingston Memorial Day Parade will kick off at 10 a.m. on Monday, May 30th at the World War II War Memorial and will end with a ceremony on Town Hall Lawn. All veterans are invited to participate by marching or riding along the parade route and provided transportation. Following the ceremony, residents are welcome to enjoy a free community cookout behind Town Hall. Bring a picnic blanket or camp chair and enjoy a hamburger or hot dog served from the grill by Kingston Town employees. The Town of Plymouth is looking for citizens to serve in a variety of roles. 
The planning board has put out a request for residents who may be interested in serving on the permanent steering committees for Cedarville, Manomet, North Plymouth, Plymouth Center, and West Plymouth. Usually meeting once a month, the steering committees are charged with implementing the various village master plans and advocating for community needs within each village. The planning board is also looking for people interested in serving as a planning board alternate. The term would be for one year and the person would attend planning board meetings and fill in as necessary. In addition, the board is looking for those interested in serving in the open space committee. Anyone interested in being considered for these positions should have a letter of interest sent to the planning board by June 8th. Appointments will be made at the June 15th meeting. You can find more details on the planning board's page on the Town of Plymouth's website. In addition, the Plymouth Select Board is looking for letters of interest from those interested in serving on the various town boards and committees. A full list can be found on the town's website under appointed officials on the town clerk's page. If interested, you can contact Chris Badeau by phone or email by May 31st, 2022. Thanks for watching this edition of Snapshot. I'm Keith Hughes, and we'll see you next time. Every parent wants their child to feel comfortable in who and how they are. But for a boy who likes playing with makeup, or a little girl who loves superheroes and hates pink, how general society responds can affect how they feel about themselves and their identity. With years of experience working with LGBTQ youth who struggle with their gender, Mal, Becca, and Renee of The Pineapple Project created a fun interactive theater piece for children aged three to eight to help broaden the conversation and advocate for self-acceptance and validation. On Saturday, June 11th from 11 a.m. to 12 p.m., join the Pineapple Project at the Plymouth Public Library for an energetic performance that explores gender, creativity, and each child's freedom to be who they are. Intended for children aged three to eight. Visit the library's website to register. Did you know that Duxbury's Cove Street neighborhood was the town's first planned development? The Duxbury Rural and Historical Society invites you to a walking tour of this historic neighborhood, guided by town historian Tony Kelso. You'll meet at the Drew Archives building on Sunday, June 12th at 3 p.m., where there is parking available. Together, you'll stroll and learn about the Cove Street Landing, Abrams Hill, and the side streets of Cedar Street and Lover's Lane. This is a ticketed event. Register via the Society's website. Next, we go on the local scene with Megan Yost of the Duxbury Free Library. I uh, actually did theater uh, professionally for a few years when I graduated. That's what my undergrad is in. And um, finding permanent work was not, <laughs> not easy, so I decided to go for a different degree. And libraries and books have always been a huge part of my life, uh, so I went to library school. <laughs> I like the versatility, especially with like kids in the teens and stuff. You can, the programs are vastly different, you know, the questions you get are vastly different, and just the, the impact you have is a little bit bigger on a to me for a kid's life than, you know, helping an adult find a random book, which I do as well and I have no problem with. But with the kids, you, you, there's more wonder, I guess, behind it. <laughs> kids that go to story time regularly are way more prepared for school than children that don't because um, they can sit through a class and they can listen to instructions and know when they need to be quiet and, and sit down and um, get through a lesson even more, but also just like, a kid can come to a program and learn that they have a, you know, that this is a passion for them and can, can really drive the rest of their life forward. I think that libraries can be super impactful on kids especially. Next month our summer reading starts, so that's kind of our big, our big drive. Um, but we have an anime club that starts up next week, uh, again regularly, that we used to have a big regular one, so we're starting that up again. I have weekly movies and um, just kind of weekly discussion uh, called Shoddy Tuesdays um, until the summer. But then when summer readings happen, so our kickoff is June 4th 
and we're doing a big like black party type thing from 10 to 4 and we have flying high dogs and an author coming to speak and we'll do a story time throughout the day um, and have tables with some other local community um, organizations and things that can give information and of course we'll have stuff out like our unusual items that people can kind of play with that they might not know we have but we have magicians coming, we have storytellers coming, we have um, race and song, which is a real nice uh, program happening, discussing like race and music and the impact of that, that's all ages. We're gonna have a dry queen story time at the end of June, which we're excited, we haven't had one in a few years. We have tons of stuff going on over the summer. Outdoor movies um, with our big blow up screen, so. Totally check out everything for the summer. <laughs> we always look for diverse books because it's really important, especially for kids and teens, to see other cultures and religions and races that they might not see in their community. So we definitely push for a diverse collection as well as having programs and putting that understanding out for people. I just read a YA book called Cold. It's about a local boy is killed and a girl kind of starts this investigation to discover who it is that um, murdered him. Um, and it has a nice twist, it's really good. Um, it takes place in like Minnesota, so it's really cold, like it's physically cold outside, that's why it's called that. Um, I read a good adult like, romance uh, book called Love and Other Disasters where they're baking contestants on a reality baking show, which everyone loves a good baking show. I read a lot of graphic novels and manga, a lot. Um, and the Wind series, W-Y-N-D, there's two volumes out and it's so good. It's like this fantasy um, world of this boy kind of discovering that he's not what he thought he always was um, and to, of course, save the world. Libraries in general, you, you still get people to come in and are like, it's so loud because libraries are really community centers. They're the new community centers. You don't build community centers anymore because it's the library. Um, and that's really the direction that I think libraries are going and will continue to go because that's, you know, communities need that place to gather that's safe, that's, you know, always there and they can trust the information they're getting and they can trust the programs that, you know, they're getting. Um, and that, that community center, I think, is really, really key for the future of, of all libraries and Duxbury has already started driving towards that, especially with like our D DEI librarian to make sure that we're really helping every single person that we can um, to feel comfortable and welcome and, and safe here. To learn more about the library's programs and commitment to diversity, equity, and inclusion, visit the Duxbury Free Library website. Abuse of adults age 60 or older often occurs at the hands of a caregiver or someone the elder trusts. June 15th is World Elder Abuse Awareness Day, and to build support and cognizance, Old Colony Elder Services has launched a March Against Elder Abuse campaign that includes lawn signs and community marches during the month of June. In partnership with Plymouth County District Attorney Timothy Cruz, Plymouth County Sheriff's Department, and the Plymouth Center for Active Living, join OCOS on Thursday, June 16th at 10.30 a.m outside Tavern on the Wharf at 6 Town Wharf. Together, you'll set off on a one-mile march down Water Street to make your voice heard, and then proceed back to Tavern on the Wharf for a light lunch and speaking presentation. To register, visit ocesma.org and click on the Plymouth event link. Does your child love making jewelry and fashion accessories? The Kingston Recreation Department invites children aged 3rd through 8th grade to two sessions of Fashion Camp, taking place on June 28th and June 30th at the Reed Community House. The session for 3rd, 4th, and 5th graders will be from 9 to 10.15 a.m. on both days, and 6th, 7th, and 8th graders will have fun from 10.30 to 11.45 a.m. From beading to resin and sewing to gluing, kids will learn some cool techniques, all to make fun accessories to glam up their wardrobe. Register via the Kingston Recreation Department website. 
As Community Services Manager at the Duxbury Senior Center, Alexandra Newcomb provides outreach, support, and advocacy for Duxbury residents. Julie Thompson spoke with Alexandra to learn more. I'm so pleased to welcome today Alex Newcomb, who is the Community Services Manager at the Duxbury Senior Center. Welcome, Alex. How are you today? I'm good, thanks, and thank you. I'm excited to be here. Excited to have you. Before we go into all the things that you do there at the um, Duxbury Senior Center, let's talk about you and how you got to be into this position. Sure. So I've been here in this role since this past December, so it's been about five and a half months. Um, and prior to joining the Senior Center, I worked for the Executive Office of Elder Affairs in Boston. I was there for about six and a half years and I worked in their assisted living unit. I was a surveyor for senior living communities in the Commonwealth. And prior to that, I worked in assisted living, the private side. So I've worked in the gerontological field for about over 10 years. And you have your master's degree in that too, right? I do, yes. So my very first job in my undergraduate studies, I worked part-time at a senior living, and I just really fell in love with working with older adults. So when it came time to pursue uh, an advanced degree, I found that UMass Boston had a program in gerontology, which is the study of aging, mm -hmm. and the master's degree focused on management of aging services. So that's the program I completed. and. It really complements what I do here at the center so well. That's wonderful. Now, obviously, um, senior centers or centers of active living or uh, all the different things they're called these days are so different than what they were 20 years ago. It's just incredible. Can you talk a little bit about what your particular focus is as the community services manager? Sure. So our community services program, we work hard to empower seniors, their families, their caregivers to make really informed life choice decisions. And we do that uh, by providing them information, support, guidance, um, and other you know related senior service and community resources. So what does that mean for me as a community services manager? So my job is specifically, you know, outreach, support, whether it's a friendly visit for someone in the community, maybe they have a hard time getting out of their house for one reason or another. I also do a lot of advocacy for folks, um, but probably one of the, the biggest roles I do at the center is I'm information and referral. So someone may call and say, you know, I'm starting to think about assisted living and I really have no idea what the heck it is. So they'll come in, meet with me, we can discuss that. Or maybe it's finding a caregiver for someone. Or maybe it's, you know, navigating transportation needs. So information and referral really cover so much. And we're here just to really be helpful to folks in our community. That's, that's really great. So you literally one-on-one -on -one will work with seniors depending on what their specific needs are to get them exactly. connected to the services or, or the programs that they need to be involved with, yes? Exactly, yes. And what, what, are the, what are the services that you're, you see are most relevant or needed for, these, for this population that you're working with? Sure, so some of the most common, uh, you might well call it challenges, or things that I help people navigate, um, a lot of it is caregiving. Whether the person themselves is a caregiver and they're trying to navigate that difficult process, or maybe they themselves are getting to a point in their life where they need a little more help and they need help figuring out how to go about finding someone to help them in their home. So caregiving and providing support and resources, that's a big part of what I do. I also help people navigate housing. Um, so maybe they're selling their family home and they want to move into whether it's, you know, a senior housing unit in town or assisted living or a retirement community. So I help people with housing a lot as well. Um, and then, of course, you know, fuel assistance, um, you know, assistance with finding food, those sorts of things are also uh, frequently, um, you know, resources I help people navigate here at the Senior Center. Okay. And talking about housing, I know that that's, that's, that's prevalent, not only for seniors, but for everybody at, at this point. How can you circle that square when there's so few housing options available for seniors? Where do you, where do you go for the information? So I always try to encourage people to be proactive instead of reactive. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, people are oftentimes discouraged when they hear that the local elder housing sites have a long waiting list to get in. So I always tell people, if you're thinking about moving in three years, five years, there's no harm in filling out the housing application and getting your name on the list now because no one knows what the future is gonna hold. And it's much easier to navigate things like moving and downsizing when you've done it in a proactive way with a plan. Mm -hmm. Because when you're stuck in a crisis, things are not as easy as they could be if they were planned ahead of time. So I really try to get people to think ahead. Um, right. Unfortunately, you know, that's not everybody's situation. So it's, you know, really working in the community, uh, figuring out if anyone has any housing resources. Housing is a huge challenge for a lot of people. Um, and we're just trying to get people as best informed as we can so they can make those good choices on their own. Great. Okay. So you're giving them all the tools basically, right. or you're helping them with their tools. Um, now, how, how involved are you with all the um, activities and programs that are run in the senior center? Because, I mean, obviously you have all kinds of things. You have golf, you have yoga, you have day trips, you have um, language classes, you have all kinds of things. You, uh, how does that activities director position dovetail with what you do? Sure, so part of my role here is not just working one-on-one -on -one with individuals uh, looking for help for you know different reasons. I also do bring programs um, and plan programs for the center. So you know, one example being looking ahead to July, we're having someone from the Social Security Administration come on site to do an info session. Uh, back in February, we had a geriatrician from Boston Medical Center give us a presentation on, you know, healthy aging. So I work closely with the programs and activities department to bring, you know, activities and programs about wellness, healthy aging, uh, things to be aware of for older adults as they age in their life. So I work really closely and it's one of the best parts of my job working at the center is I can kind of peek in. Um, on a lot of the programs we have, many of you met that you already mentioned, we have wonderful activities and programs going on all the time. Yeah, you really do. And you, you are clearly um, very invested in, in your population and in your job that just shines through, through your words oh, and your face. Thank you. Now, you have an event coming up on, July, on June 2nd, um, Teaching Tolerance. Can you talk about that? Sure. So this is our Pride event. We're very, very excited because we have Bob Parlin joining us. And Bob Parlin is the co-founder of the GSA, which many people may remember uh, from being in school, the Gay Straight Alliance. But it's the acronym has since changed to Gender Sexuality Awareness. But either way, we're very excited to have Bob join us. He's going to speak to the group. It's an intergenerational event. It's completely free. We have the South Shore taco guy with his food truck coming to give us free tacos. We're gonna have Jasmine perform for us. It's gonna be a fantastic event and we really look forward to everybody joining us on June 2nd. Oh, that's wonderful. And you said it's open to the entire uh, community. Anybody? Everybody, yeah. yes. All ages, yeah, and you're hosting yes. it there. That's great. Correct. Things um, planned over the summer, special events, special programs? So like I said, we have Social Security coming here on the 21st to do an information session. And I really encourage everyone to check out our newsletter. If you don't get it in the mail, you can go online to the Duxbury Senior Center website and look at it online. We have some boat trips from the Duxbury Maritime Center. We have some bus trips. Uh, I know one of them is going to Newport to look at lighthouses. Uh, we just have a lot going on all the time. And I really just encourage folks to come on into the center if you haven't been before. It's a wonderful place. I can't say enough wonderful things about it. Clearly. And since this population over 60 is the fastest growing population in our area, um, you have your work cut out for you. And, and boy, is Duxbury lucky to have you. We thank you so oh, much for joining you. us today. Of course. Thanks so much. Visit DuxburySeniorCenter.org to reach out to Alexandra and connect with all the Senior Center has to offer. Race Amity Day was officially recognized by the state of Massachusetts in 2015 to recognize that the Commonwealth is comprised of multicultural, multi-ethnic, and multiracial citizens and to encourage friendship, collegiality, civility, respect, and kindness as the commonly shared ideals of our collective citizenry. 
To celebrate the diversity in our community and friendships, the Duxbury Free Library welcomes you to a free Race Amity Day picnic on the library lawn. On Sunday, June 12th from 1 to 3 p.m., bring a picnic basket and your friends and family for games, art, educational materials, and more. This event is co-sponsored by the Duxbury Interfaith Council's Race Amity Committee. See the library's website for more details. Next up is Matt Umbriana with what's happening in our schools. Thanks, Elizabeth. Here's a look at what's happening in our schools. Seniors are wrapping up their year and the first week of June is a busy one for them. In Pembroke, the Senior Walk will be held June 2nd starting at 9 a.m. Seniors will be visiting their elementary and middle schools to be cheered on and celebrated for all they've accomplished. Also on June 2nd is Senior Awards Night for those who have received a scholarship and or an academic award. The week wraps up with Class of 2022 graduation ceremony at 10 a.m. on the Pembroke High School Athletic Complex. Also in Pembroke, sophomore seminars will be held May 24th to the 27th. Guidance counselors will be meeting with all sophomores using Naviance to conduct career searches, research employment potential, and outlook as well as potential college majors. This information will help guide students in their junior year when conducting college searches during their junior seminar. Over at Silver Lake, the seniors will be spending their first week of June with graduation rehearsals May 31st through June 2nd, with graduation ceremony on Friday, June 3rd at 6 p.m. On June 2nd, there will be a morning senior parade and at 6 p.m. senior awards ceremony to hand out academic awards and scholarships. Plymouth South High School junior Taylor Gendron had her PSA on depression awareness voted the greatest Save Teen PSA 2022 national winner. After winning the Best of Boston Region, she competed against 12 other videos from around the country to win. To watch her video and other winners, visit teenpsa.org. The Pembroke track team had great success at the Division IV State Relay Meet. The girls' outdoor 4x100 relay team set a school record of 49.40 seconds. The boys' shot put relay finished first. Along with the boys' 4x100 relay team, the boys' long jump relay team, and the boys' triple jump relay team. Lakers baseball coach Ken Tachi recently celebrated his 200th win. Congratulations, coach. The Lakers girls softball team continues to have a successful winning season with just a few games left to play. Earlier this month, Haley Beatrice and Cole Wright from Silver Lake Regional High School and Megan Dorsey and Aiden Keefe from Pembroke High School were named Patriot League Scholar Athletes. The end of school year music and arts events are starting to wrap up. Spring concerts for Pembroke Elementary and middle schools will be presented over the next several weeks. The elementary schools will also have art showcases on display. For details, check out the school's calendar at pembrokek12.org. Silver Lake Middle School will be holding spring concerts the week of May 30th. Check out the school calendar for details. Thanks for watching this edition of In Our Schools. I'm Madam Brianna, and we'll see you next time. Thanks, Matt. And thank you for watching this episode of Local Matters. From all of us at PAC TV, have a safe and happy week. We'll see you next time. Thank you for watching. We are grateful for your attention. If you like what you saw, please like and subscribe to The Local Scene here and share everywhere. Thank you, friends.